It's all right. Is all set? Okay. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for attending. This is uh, laminating balsa fins and um, for mid and high power rockets. My name is Randy Gilbert. And uh, with that, we'll get started a little bit. So my name is Randy Gilbert. I've been flying model rockets for 49 years. I worked in some capacity for Century Engineering Company and for Quest Aerospace. Mostly behind the scenes kind of work where I would build prototype models based on things, on specifications that they sent me. Um, my, uh, my jewel is having finished the CNC cut foam model of the Starship Enterprise 1701E that went into creating Quest's uh, Starship Enterprise model rocket. And that was some time ago, but uh, it was quite a challenge and, and a lot of fun. And um, I'm proud to say that Bill Stein still has that rocket on his shelf. <laughs> so, uh, and Bill and I have been friends for a very long time as well. Bill Stein and I have uh, had a friendship since like 1977, so and, uh, I was privileged enough to know his dad, Harry, and uh, Harry was a good friend of mine. Uh, and my passion in model rocketry is to build good looking rockets, and I am a builder, and second to a builder, I'm a flyer, so, and I'm a sport guy, I, I'm not a competitor. Um, I kind of compete with myself, trying to see what I can, what limits I can push and what I can do that's no different. So, uh, this presentation will enhance your understanding of laminating balsa to make fins suitable for mid and high power rocketry, and it will not solve the glue and finishing debates of the ages. <laughs> okay, we are just not going to attempt to do that here, okay? Uh, every time I see one of those threads on Facebook, and, and it, you just want to go say something and then you go, no, no, run away, run away. So, let's get started. <clears throat> Do a little overview of lamination here. It started, you know, we, we've used cardstock as fins, you know, and we still do. You know, a lot of the Dr. Such stuff is all made out of cardstock. Um, <clears throat> Centuri popularized cardstock when they started using 16th uh, inch cardstock as fin material back in the 70s in a commercial way. Paper lamination over balsa, gosh, I probably can't tell you when that began because it probably happened about the time I was born, I would guess, which would have been in the mid 50s. Uh, plywood under balsa. This uh, commercialized you know, on a wide basis was first done with the Estes uh, Megadur Red Max. Uh, if you've built one of those, then you know that it has a plywood fin uh, under a balsa sheeting. And that's what makes those fins on the Red Max so nice and beefy. And that's what gives that rocket its scale appearance. When you look at it, you look at a regular Red Max kit, you go, Gee, they kind of had that same feel, um, and I can I can tell you that from, a little bit from experience because back in 1990, I kitted a rocket that was called Das Blue Max, and for all intents and purposes, it looked exactly like a Red Max, except it had plywood fins, and those plywood fins. <clears throat> While they were nice and they were to scale, believe me, I checked it out when I got my, my Megadur Red Max kit. First thing I did was I took one of my old kits that I kitted from, from the 90s and I laid the, laid the balsa over and I went, yeah, yeah I was right. <laughs> so I had my, I had my own day. Um, but what was wrong with that was they were one eighth inch plywood and they lacked that, that thickness, that heft that the Estes uh, Megadur Red Max has in its fins. It's just that thickness that makes a difference. And so, also at about the same time, 
that uh, Estes brought out their red, their uh, Mega Red Max kit. They brought out the Mega Mosquito. And if you've built a Mega Mosquito, and many of us have, because Estes has been nice and put them on sale so much in the past year or two, made it a very, very nice kit for a reasonable price that you can have a lot of fun with. And the thing is just as durable as a day is long. I've even, I've even catoed an E12 in mine and put a new engine mount in it. It still is to fly again, okay? But <clears throat> they have uh, a balsa fin core with balsa sheet laminate over it. And that, again, is another commercialization of this idea. And then, of course, there's the layup of fiberglass, which we're not going to discuss in this presentation. Okay. Let's talk about some of the trade-offs between uh, laminated balsa or uh, with laminated balsa. And the advantages, you know, it's, you've got a very strong fin, it's durable, and as I've talked about, our appearance is more to scale. It suits upscale models real well. Disadvantages, weight, okay, obviously weighs a little more. Time, gotta tell you, takes time to do this. Okay? It's not just like cutting out a single fin, slapping it on a model and going. It doesn't happen. <clears throat> and it's expensive. If you go with the right kind of balsa wood, it's going to cost you a little bit more. Okay? We'll talk about that as we get in here. And don't worry about the fact that I just broke it. It doesn't matter. But what it does do, oh, I'll put that down so I can pass it around. Um, take a look at what a laminated fin looks like. Um, <clears throat> My breaking that off makes a point, and that is the reason I didn't put that particular fin into use was the core balsa is too soft, way too soft for that particular rocket. And I discovered that after I built it, I didn't like it, and that's why I made five fins for that rocket instead of four. Because <laughs> I started over with a stronger piece of balsa wood at my core. And I discovered that, that that core wasn't strong enough when I was test fitting it into the body and the slots. And I ripped out the top and the bottom chunks of balsa, as you can see on the uh, fin tabs that go all the way to the bottom of the engine mount. So, we'll go on. Let's talk about safety equipment for a minute because it's really important that the things that we do in model rocketry, not only at the launches, but the way we build these things, we've got to be safe about doing it, okay? And here are just things I'm going to recommend to you, okay? <laughs> Goggles. Goggles are eyewear, protective eyewear, okay? Just use it, okay? It's a whole lot cheaper and, and a whole lot, you know, more fun than going to the emergency room trying to get a, you know, a, a sliver of balsam out of your eye. Protective gloves. We're going to deal with a lot of different adhesives here. Just wear the gloves. <laughs> It's so much easier to throw away a glove that you've got CA two fingers together on than it is to try and, you know, clean up your own fingers and debond them after you've stuck them together. And if any of you have ever done that with a brand new bottle of CA, that's the thin stuff is particularly nasty. You know, I mean, you can have the best of intentions and the next thing you know, you're looking at your two fingers and you, you can't separate them and that's a bad thing, okay? Let's talk about an apron or old clothes. Yeah, I can't tell you how many sets of pajama bottoms I've ruined <laughs> building rockets at my bench in the evening while I'm, I'm wearing my, my Joe Boxer pajama bottoms, you know, and I get to, you get a drip of CA or epoxy on them, and that's all she wrote, right? So, I mean, you just don't, uh, you know, it, it just, it makes them uncomfortable after that. You know, they become holy, they become, they become tough where the epoxy, you know, got into the fabric and set. It's just not a good idea. Get an apron. Wear some old clothes. Get the stuff that, you know, you would, you would send to uh, St. Vincent de Paul, except, you know, you can get one more use out of it and you can wipe epoxy on it and not worry about it, right? A respirator. This is a dusty process, okay? <laughs> because of the fact that if you're going to build a three-fin rocket, you're gonna make nine fins. If you're gonna build a four fin rocket, you're gonna make 12 fins, okay? Lots of dust in this process, okay? Get a respirator, even if it's the simple, you know, 
fiber cones that they make that fit over your face with the, the elastic strap. Just, just get it. You'll be glad you did. The CA debonder. Get it. Keep it near your workstation. <laughs> okay? If you don't get CA glue debonder, get your wife or your girlfriend or, or guys, if you're independent, just go to CVS and buy a bottle of nail polish remover. You can buy the unscented stuff. It's pure acetone. <laughs> and that's what it takes to debond the stuff. Okay? One word about acetone. It's extremely volatile. Okay? It's not real healthy to, in, to breathe the fumes. It's even less healthy to leave a cloth that you've soaked in it in the house. So if you're going to use acetone to debond your fingers or anything else, take the cloth or the paper towels or whatever it is that you're going to use and put them outside in the trash before you go to bed. You'll just feel better about it, okay? Mark? That's another, uh, that's another uh, thing to support gloves because what people generally don't know is that acetone can be absorbed through the skin. And it's not good for your skin either. It is not part of a balanced breakfast, no. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's, let's just suffice it to say that acetone is nasty stuff, okay? And that this is another good reason to not get your fingers bonded together. All right? Work with adequate ventilation. Always make sure there's enough air in the room. You know, you just don't want to get to that point where you're, and if you've ever worked with CA, you know that once the stuff starts curing, it gives off that nasty whiff and that, that smoke that just makes you, yeah, it makes your eyes water and your nose twitch, you know? Just make sure there's enough air in the room, all right? And I, I can't emphasize this enough, you know? Make sure that your workspace is clear, okay? If, heaven forbid, you should spill the CA, at least you won't worry about, you know, attaching 15 different things to your workspace, right? <laughs> and having to debond all those items. You know, you can just kind of mop it up with a uh, paper towel and, and then get rid of the stuff right away, okay? All right, <clears throat> we're going to revisit this slide a couple times during the presentation because I think it's important. Tools and materials, okay, for cutting. Saws, knives, good old hand-powered stuff, or, you know, invest in a small jigsaw or something like that. You can have fun with it. I did, I bought a small jigsaw this last year, get, been getting good use out of it. Sanding, hand and machine, okay? We'll talk more about this later. Um, I'm a big fan of sanding hardware. Sheets, bars, sponges. Um, Bob Kaplow turned me on to sponges, by the way. They're great. Sanding sponges are great. If you haven't used sanding sponges with your model rockets, you need to go up and back up because you'll figure out exactly how good they are. Um, <clears throat> belt, disc, and jitterbug sanders, okay, and the motorized stuff. Adhesives. These are my recommendations for this process. You'll need rapid cure CA, mid cure CA, 20 minute epoxy, and a finishing epoxy, which is usually 30 to 45 minutes. And finding the right balsa. Density is what you're concerned with here, okay? Two ways to do that. <clears throat> One, you can go to SIG Manufacturing, which is, for those of us who've been around the hobby for a while, an old and well-known model aircraft supplier, and you can buy hard balsa from their catalog. It's it's right out there in plain sight. You can order hard balsa. That's the easy way, okay? The expedient way is you can go to your local hobby shop and take your postal scale with you, and you can weigh the balsa sheets and pick the heaviest ones <clears throat> because they are the most dense, okay? So they're the hardest, all right? I found that out. Just was, occurred to me one day. I went, hmm, I need to take my scale. Over. And sure enough, the balsa that I'd been choosing was the heaviest pieces. So, works out. Randy, where do you get the sanding sponges? Sanding sponges are available um, 
Gosh, almost every big box store. Yeah, Home Depot, Lowe's, um, Walmart carries them. Yeah, Walmart has them. Yeah, Walmart has them. Yeah. And do they make them in a Ace fine Harbor. grip? Can you get them in a fine grip too? Yeah. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I've got, I have uh, a 400, 220, um, yeah, 400. 300. Yeah, yeah I've got uh, a number of uh, very light grit sanding sponges that I use regularly. Different angles on them so you can yes. get into different. Yes, yes. Let's, let's talk about that for a minute too, okay? If you pick your sanding sponges um, carefully, you can get the ones that have 45 degree angles built into them. And the sponge is really very resilient, and it's so nice when you're smoothing out fillets on your rockets because it will just lay right in there and just groove right along with them. Okay, so it, it gets a job done. Let's talk. About, yeah, Dave. I want to mention too for your uh, tools and equipment. What I found works really good is uh, a nice relatively thick piece of glass for your, your uh, cutting board. And uh, uh, I like to put weight, I like to use CD cases and some if, it, if the fin is small enough, uh, stack a 10 of them or so to weight your uh, lamination process. So everything's nice and flat, because a piece of glass is virtually as flat yes. as can be. Yeah, so. points well taken, you know. I hadn't, I hadn't thought about that, and yet what I use is I use one of these thick kitchen boards that's made out of polyethylene. Uh, I have one for my kitchen and one for my hobby. And it's hard and flat, and it makes a great cutting surface. And you don't have to worry about hacking it up, because if you do hack it up, you can take a belt sander or a palm sander to it with some 180 grit on it, sand all the lines out of it, and start over again. Yes, sir. Why don't you rec recommend uh I'm sorry. Again, the question. Why don't you recommend wood glue? What? For, for the what lamination for process. process. Using wood glue instead, yeah. instead, of, instead of CA or epoxy. Oh, we're going to get to that. We're going to talk more about it. Okay? Um, my personal experience is with CA. I like the way CA works. Okay? Let's talk about glue application aids. <coughs> I think we need some craft or soldering brushes, some foam brushes. For my technique, we got to have some blue painters or masking tape, and then I'm going to toss in there some spent engine casings, okay, different sizes, okay, anywhere from 13 millimeter up to 29 millimeter, okay. You'll see what's going to happen here. All right, let's talk about preparing the body tube. First, we're going to mark it and connect them, connect the lines with a guide. I just happen to, I happen to use the Estes guide. There are a lot of good guides out there. Some of them are very expensive. And I understand that, but I need to do this on a budget, so the Estes guide works well for me. Let's cut fin slots. Okay, what I'm showing here is a Dremel tool with a couple of. Uh, cutters on it that are about 3 sixteenths of an inch spaced by um, washers, okay? And you can take that and you can use that Dremel tool and you can cut that slot <coughs> in one pass. It takes a little practice, okay? But you can do it. What cutting wheels are you using? Are those the grid things or the... Uh... I use the ones that, uh, that are fiber reinforced, Bob. Oh, okay, cutoff wheels? Yeah, I use the fiber reinforced okay. discs, not the grit ones. Yeah, they yeah, bust too easy. Yeah, they, if, if you're using the cutoff wheels, I guess some of right. they're called. Cutoff wheels, I'm sorry. Yeah. Lost, the way you keep them from busting so often is you put a couple drops of thin CA and let it wick in. Yes, I remember, you, I remember reading that as one of your suggestions someplace else. Yeah, that works well. And okay. wear safety glasses anyway, because no matter what you're using, it's going to shower. Yeah. Wear the safety glasses when you're using the cutoff wheels, okay? Please, just do it. It's not worth your eyesight. Sanding. We have to use some sanding, okay? Cut your slot, sand the tube, all right? Don't just think that the glycine is going to suck up the glue. It's not. The glycine is smooth. Smooth is your enemy. What you want is lots of little micro 
cuts and, and scrapes and scratches in that so that the epoxy's got something to grip to, okay? We'll come back to sanding again too. Let's talk about designing the core fit, okay? For my purposes and this purposes of this discussion, I've used nothing but uh, through the wall fit design, okay? I recommend open rocket. If you don't have a lot of experience with through the wall fin tabs, Open Rocket does a very nice job of simulating those tabs for you. This will be your thickest wood layer in the laminated fit. Okay, and for again for the purposes that I've set forth in this presentation, we'll use anywhere from a one eighth inch thick core which is what I had in this model, because you can notice that the fins are fairly thin, to um, <clears throat> a quarter inch core, which is what there is in this model. Thank you, Bob. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, green direction. As we all know, what we want to do right is we want to align the grain with the leading edge. Not necessarily so in creating a laminated balsa fit. Okay? We may have just as much or better results by making the balsa parallel to the long axis of the rocket. Okay, for the center fit. Okay? We're going to come back and use these sheets and put them up you know, line them up with the leading edge. And I can't emphasize enough about the um, using the motor mount for proper support here. <clears throat> we'll talk more about that in the next slide. <clears throat> this is what I was talking about when I talked a moment ago about um, sheeting the core fin. You can I mean, let's, let's face it, folks, area is area, okay? You're going to use the same square amount of square area in balsa wood, whether you do this with the sheets running perpendicular to the body or whether they're running with the leading edge of the fin. It's going to take you the same amount of balsa wood, okay? So look at this. Try and digest it. This is when you're going to sheet with the perpendicular. Okay, and down here, we're going to show the sheets parallel to the leading edge of the fin. Okay. I told you we were going to talk more about the engine mount and centering replacement. And again, I, uh, I owe some respect to uh, Bob Capo here because he taught me a lesson about how the leading edge of this fin will dig into the body tube if you don't put some support under it. So I'm a big user of three centering rings. You may choose not to, you may choose to put two far apart. I just happen to like to use three. Okay? They're my models, I build them the way I feel about them, right? So Let's look at this for a moment, okay? This is what I'm talking about when I say that leading edge, okay? Put this ring right under the leading edge of that fin, okay? Right under that tip. That way it's got support. When it comes down, if the rocket is missing this section and missing this ring, comes down, it takes a hit, forces the fin this way, and it's going to pivot, actually it's going to pivot on this centering ring, okay? You don't want that to happen with your rod. It makes it very difficult to fix, okay? Put the extra centering ring in there under the tip of the fin, you'll be glad you did. Okay? This, this can be even useful on fins of a, like a Nike smoke, because even though a Nike smoke has a clipped fin, you know, trapezoidal fin, the rocket comes down up on the side, hits that bottom corner, the moment arm of it shoves the top corner of the fin up into the bracket body, 
Just put a, put a centering ring under that edge. It helps. Okay, let's talk about uh, the motor mount. We talked about the, the position. Use a template, okay? I also have paper templates that you will see later in this presentation. Cut out the paper templates, put them on the engine mount, use them to set up your centering rings, and then start cutting balls of wood, okay? Don't get ahead of yourself. Measure your through the wall tab length and depth twice before you cut it, okay? Measure twice, cut once, all right? Once you cut this bad boy, <laughs> if it's not long enough, you're never gonna have the strength that you would have if, it, if it's not correctly bonded to the motor mount. Just better to cut it long and to have to sand it off than to not cut it long enough and be a sixteenth of an inch short and try and make it up with, with epoxy and micro balloons. It's just not the same. You can't add what's not there for a good fit. And the good fit gives you strength. Pre-cut preparation, okay? We have to sheet the fins, okay? In some cases, we have rather large fins that we need to sheet. This particular rocket has laminated balsa fins. You can see that the standard three or four inch balsa sheet that you buy at your hobby shop is not going to cover that fin. Okay? That requires that you take the balsa wood and glue it on the long axis. Okay? If you have lots of hands or lots of clamps and a huge work area, because, as we all know, balsa sheets are usually three feet long. Then you can <clears throat> hold enough balsa wood down on your workspace to use thin CA. I am not fortunate in that way. Therefore, I use medium CA, which takes a little longer to cure. I put the CA on one edge of the balsa and then press the two edges together and then get on my zip kicker <laughs> and kick it real quick, okay? Now we're going to talk a little bit about the fin patterns, okay? And again, if you're not real experienced with designing your own fin patterns, Open Rocket's a great way to do this. Because you can go into Open Rocket and tell it, I want to print the fin patterns. And it will dump them all out into a PDF file for you. Print them out at 100%, and you can start cutting. Okay, in particular, I want you to look at a couple of joints here. I want you to look at this joint. Oops, my bad. There you go. I want you to look at this joint. I want you to look at this joint. These are things that Open Rocket's not going to teach you how to do. Okay? You need to work these things out ahead of time. Make your slots. These are your core fins, okay? So you make these slots in these core fins or these corners. And it doesn't matter that they're there because you're going to sheet them later. So that, all this stuff's going to be covered. It's all going to disappear. What you get is strength because now you're not trying to glue a fairing on a fin on just the leading edge of the fin. It's actually part of the fin because you've taken it way down into the fin itself. Yeah. 
little bit about tracing and cutting the core fins. Trace the fin patterns onto the wide balsa sheets. And then cut the fin out. In this particular instance, these are the fins that I used for this, these pictures. And we're back to safety equipment again, okay? Don't forget, use the goggles, use the, use the gloves, okay? Lots of glue involved here. Don't get stuck. <laughs> After you've cut out your fin, glue the sheeting to the core fin, okay? And what we're showing here in the three, in the three photographs that you see, here's our core. And you can see that I just, I smeared medium CA on it. Here's one of my sheets. I glue the sheet to the core. I flip it over. I glue the sheet on the other side of the core. This is what my, my core fin laminated looks like. And this is what the end view of the laminated fin looks like. Here you can see exactly what this fin looked like when I was building it, okay? For purposes of this rocket, the leading edge of these strakes comes way down into this fin, down about an inch or so. Why is this good? Because the rest of it is just sheeted over. I mean, it's, it's strengthened because there's no two cuts at the same location. So in this particular illustration, notice that the core fin grain was at 90 degrees to the surface fin grain. This gives you an incredibly strong, hard fin. I don't have any engineering data to back this up, but ever since I've done this presentation, I keep coming back to thinking about trying to find a way to do some stress fracture uh, analysis on some, you know, cross um, cross sheet of balsa glue. I think it might be fun to do. Let's talk about gluing the fin to the body. You want to scuff the body and the motor mount tubes with medium sandpaper before you start putting things together. Um, <clears throat> Once you've scuffed those, and again, I use my, stand, my sanding uh, sponges to do that because they just work on body tubes really nice. Get your craft brushes out, mix up a little bit of epoxy. Take that craft brush, dip it in the epoxy, put it in the fin slot, dab it along the body, along the motor mount tube. <laughs> My assumption is here that you've already put the motor mount in the rocket, okay? That it's all lined up, that the, that the slot is on the fin, the fin slot is there, you're ready to go, okay? So you're going to take the epoxy brush and you're going to brush the epoxy into those slots, okay? And which kind of epoxy are you using at that point? At this point, I'm using five minute, okay? I'm using five minute for this piece. Okay. You can use 15 minute. I have used 15 minute also. Keeps you a little slow. It, yeah, it, it makes it tough to keep the fin aligned, okay? Especially if you're working on fin number one, okay? Which is one of those things that you can decide whether or not you want to do the trade off. You might decide that you want to do fin number one with five minute and do the other three with 15 minute. That's okay. You want to get that fin number one so that it's straight you know, perpendicular to the body, and you don't want to have to stand around and hold the fin in place for 15 minutes waiting for the epoxy to set. Don't fillet the fin at this time, okay? Don't put fillets on these fins yet. We're gonna do that later. You'll see why. Next step, using the foam brushes, we're going to apply the finishing epoxy to the fins. Before
before we fill it. Okay? But what happens here is a couple of things. By brushing the fill in epoxy onto the balsa, it also leaks into the edge of the body tube that has been cut. Okay? Kind of seals up any imperfections that you may have missed with the epoxy that you just glued the fin into the motor mount with. You can see, if you look closely here, in this area and this area, you see these little dark lines. Whoops, again I clicked. You see these little dark lines? That's where the finishing epoxy actually flowed into the body tube. It's a good thing. It's not a bad thing. Add strength. Okay? The spiraling, you mean? I'm sorry? The spiraling? Okay. Yep. Yep. Flow right into the spiral. So, use the foam brushes to brush on the finishing epoxy. Work quickly. Don't overbrush it. Don't mix up four ounces of it. <laughs> you ever mixed up a lot of finishing epoxy? You won't do it twice. <laughs> One, it's expensive. Two, it creates a little plastic or whatever kind of pot you're using, a very, very hot curing epoxy that cures itself in far less time than the 20 minutes to 30 minutes that it says you have to brush it, you know, yeah, it onto the gets surface. Warm. Oh, it doesn't just get warm. <laughs> it gets uncomfortably hot. Okay? So, you know, don't mix more than a couple of ounces of epoxy at a time. Um, with the finishing epoxy, it's easy to do. The stuff sets up in about 20 minutes. Brush it on, on like, on the surfaces that are up. And then, you know, if you don't have any place else to do it, put it over the sink so that, you know, the tail can fall into the sink weight this in, and then brush it on the bottoms, right? Okay. Clean up your runs and drips with rubbing alcohol. Works great. Also, if you get a little epoxy on your fingers, you know, rubbing alcohol is great to get it off. Works. Works well. Just plain old nice and rubble alcohol. Now, let's talk about sanding these fins, okay? You gotta get a little creative because they do a few things backwards here, like from normal rocketry where you get kind of backwards, okay? Like putting the finishing epoxy on the fin before we fill it in, all right? So let me suggest, take the edge of the table, hold the rocket securely with one hand, the other hand you've got your mouse palm sander, Okay, with say 180 on it to start with, because what you're looking to do is level it, right? And just have at it, just go back and forth, smooth it out. Don't get overzealous with it, okay? You're gonna regret it if you, if you push too hard, okay? You gotta learn how to do this, all right? So take it easy the first couple times. Maybe you only wanna start with 220 instead of 180, okay? After you do it with after you do the leveling, come back and you can do the smoothing. All right? Let's talk about the slide. The mouse sander is small, light enough to allow sanding and the fins attached to the rocket. You have to learn how to hold it, how much pressure to use. Um, and you use it on the edge of the table or bench. Give your finishing epoxy at least 24 hours to cure. You'll know when it's cured. Okay, because finishing epoxy, unlike most other epoxies, is very, very tacky. It feels tacky for hours after you've applied it. Only when you can come back to it and touch it and it doesn't feel tacky is it fully cured. So just give it overnight. You know, do it before you go to bed on Thursday night and Friday night, it'll be ready to work on again. Okay? Now we're going to get ready and do the fillets. 
Okay, as you can see in the photograph, what I do is I lay the tape along the longitudinal axis of the rocket. Two strips, strip on the fin, strip on the rocket, leaving about a quarter of an inch between the fin and the rocket, body and the fin. Okay? I've got the exaggerated view over here on the left <laughs> to show you where the tape is placed. Here's how we do the fillets. Take your 15 to 20 minute epoxy, mix it in small batches. Small batches are small enough that you would do this side and this side at the same time. They're both sitting upright, okay? Just works out well that way, okay? Try not to put air bubbles in the epoxy when you mix it, all right? The bad part about this is, is if you're pouring the epoxy into the fillet, which we'll get to in a minute, and the air bubbles in there, if it pops up while it's drying or while it's curing, you're gonna have a hole to fill. The idea is to try and lessen the work, not create the work. So try and not mix bubbles into the epoxy when you're, when you're mixing it. Between the strips of tape, in this area, pour your epoxy into that area. And then we're going to smooth it with the tool. And the tool is your expended rocket motor. Okay? You can choose what size radius you want for your fin fillets. 18 millimeter motor, standard ABC motor, will give you a 9 millimeter fillet. 24 millimeter DE motor will give you a 12 millimeter fillet. 29 millimeter FG will give you a 14 and a half millimeter fillet. Okay? In this example, I've shown the rocket motor and an exaggerated fillet. It shows the tape here as well, okay? Here's the tape, here's the fillet, here's the rocket motor being used to smooth the fillet. <coughs> Aha! This is how you do it, okay? You don't have to lay the rocket engine down. Hold it with a couple of fingers and drag it, okay? You can do the same thing with a dowel. You know, if you've got a three-quarter inch dowel, that's about the same diameter as an A, B, or C engine. All right? Just use it and drag it. Let's do it again. Just drag the motor across the fillet. Come on. All right? The result will be what you're looking at down here in the inset. You'll have this nice, smooth, curved fillet that lays in between two pieces of tape. I just realized the slide that I forgot. And you always do that, right? The one that should be there is remove the tape before the epoxy sets. Okay? You can leave it there until it sets, but it's not a really good idea. Okay? Because the inside edge of the, the tape that's next to the epoxy is going to wind up being epoxy to your rocket. That's not a good thing. Okay? So, your 20 minute epoxy, 12, 15 minutes into it, depending on how you mix your epoxy, you know how you, know how you get a feel for mixing epoxy. Everybody does it a little differently, right? Some people weigh it, I weigh it. Okay, other people just go by the marks on the sides of the bottle, they kind of, you know, eyeball it, squish in a puddle of this, a puddle of that, yeah, that's about right, okay. It works either way, folks. I've done it both ways for years, okay? It's just that, you know, in my old age, I started weighing it out. I found out that it works pretty good if you weigh it out, you know? It doesn't take that much longer, and it makes sure that you're getting exactly the same amount of epoxy, both hardener and resin. So, <clears throat> pull the tape up, 
Before the epoxy hardens, yes, Mark. I was going to say uh, some of the if you if you want to go really crazy, some of the boat builders epoxies have medium pumps. They're expensive, but it's enough epoxy to build a lot of rockets, and it's boat builder. I mean, it's, it is legitimate boat building epoxy. It's a little it's a little fussy, but you do get a good mix of epoxy. They're usually not one to one mixes, but that's the stuff I use also. And I don't have the fancy pumps. I go to the local farm and fleet store where I live. And I get the veterinary syringes, you know, three tick marks on this one, right. six tick marks on that one, and it doesn't matter if I'm doing a quarter sized blob or a large amount. Yeah, uh, veterinary large. syringes would be maybe a perfect application for this. Okay, and you know, I mean, let's face it, folks, we're doing like boxing here, so most everything we're going to touch it, touch with it is going to be expendable. <laughs> okay, so, you know, I, I use. You know, like you use the syringes, okay? I use little medicine cups. Well, the, the right? syringes have right. the a hundred medicine cups from Amazon.com for uh, like two uh, syringes or whatever, you know, a couple of money you know? stuff in it, Randy, so you can keep reusing it. You're just reloading them. I'm, I'm putting that onto uh, cheaper than those cups you're talking about. Yes. The, the lids from the old Pringles cans or the peanut cans or whatever else you got lying around. Yeah, that, that's my favorite mixing. Yep. Yeah, that's what I use. I use the little, I use little medicine cups. They, uh, they work real well. All right, finish, the, finish and sand the body and fin joints. Again, if you've got a mouse sander, good choice. Put the 220 on it and start, uh, start very carefully moving it back and forth on this joint. You can smooth that out real nice, real quick. And this is assuming the epoxy is all cured, okay? Got to let things cure, folks. You can't go at this when the epoxy is only half cured. It's not going to work, okay? Give it overnight. Let it sit. Let it harden. All right? <clears throat> Start with the, the um, heavier grits to level the uneven surfaces. The sanding sponges, and again, um, someone mentioned earlier that the sanding sponges had angles on them. Yes, I chose a sanding sponge with angles on it for my illustration here. Buy one. I think you'll find it's great. You know, they're a really good tool that I've added to my uh, repertoire of tools, and I, I really enjoy using the sanding sponges. The sanding bar is another piece of equipment that I, I just can't I can't live without it. Okay, because the sanding bar allows me to level this entire surface at once. Okay, and you got to be careful with the sanding bar too, because if you get overzealous with it. And you lay it in here in the fillet corner, and you just start seeing, you know, create a nice groove over here on the fin. <laughs> it's not fun to fill that groove, okay? So, gentle, okay? Gentle. Gets it done. All right. Some examples of rockets with laminated balls of fins. <clears throat> the Space Race Sport America that I built. This was the first one that I built with laminated balsa fins. These fins have a 1 8 inch hard balsa core and they're sheeted with 1 16th inch balsa. Okay, again, through the wall mount, down to the 29 millimeter engine mount. Um, this is an upscale of an Estes kit that was available sometime in the early 80s. Um, I first crashed this model at um, Muskegon last summer. <laughs> I launched it with an I launched it with an F uh, an Estes F15, and um, it was a little breezy, and the rocket is just probably real marginally at the edge of what that rocket motor can lift. And it just went up and over, cruised over the other side of the road and crashed in the cornfield on the other side of the trees. And um, <clears throat> put the rocket all the way down to here when the shock cord came out. <laughs> Zippered it all the way down to here. So um, it's pretty much been rebuilt. Um, it was lots of fun. Um, again, sheet balls of fins, okay? And they survived. Pardon? Your fins survived. Correct. 
I'm sorry. Your fin your fins survived the crash. Yeah, yeah. Quite well. The whole the whole uh, tail end assembly of the rocket was in great shape. <laughs> you know, everything from the nose down to the wings was terrible. Best zipper I ever saw. <laughs> it looked like somebody took a knife and went. <laughs> it was good. Okay, this was my second effort. Uh, three sixteenths inch balsa core. Uh, 16th inch uh, sheets on it. Okay, again, finished with finishing epoxy. They're strong. Okay, I mean, they're really strong. You know, I, I'm gonna, you know, we're gonna end early, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna encourage you to come over and look at the rockets and, you know, pick them up and, you know, knock on the fins. I'm not worried about you putting a dent in one. It's not going to happen. Okay. Um, this one, as you can see, was flown uh, just this last year. Um, this rocket's also been flown, although this is a picture from uh, Open Rocket. Um, this one I built, and I liked it so much that um, I built a smaller version. It's the same fin can, two different body tubes. So have some fun with that kind of thing. And the Orbital Transport Laboratory. Um, a design of the month plan from Estes in 1971 by a fellow from New Mexico whose name I don't recall. I remember he's from New Mexico. Um, was originally a BT-60 uh, model that uh, I upscaled, and uh, if you'd like some more details on that, we're going to talk more about the decals and how I did those in the um, second seminar that I do tonight at 9.30 about decals. So, um, I've had lots of fun doing this laminated balls of thing. I think that it makes a really cool looking rocket. Um, I don't know for a fact that it's cheaper than using plywood. I know that it's easier for someone who doesn't have a lot of tooling uh, to make sheet laminated balsa fins than it is to try and cut plywood all the time. <laughs> Cutting plywood, you know, creates a lot of sawdust and stuff. I mean, this I can still use with exacto. I can still cut this with exacto knives if I choose to. Okay. Um, you know, the most important thing we do with this hobby is <clears throat> we uh, fly safe, we have fun, and we pay forward. Okay, so I hope that you can put to use some of the things that I've taught you today. I hope that I've impaired, imparted some knowledge to you today. And uh, that would be the best thing that would come out of this would be uh, if you could take one thing that I've taught today and put it to use, and that would be gratifying for me. So thank you very much. I'll take any questions that you may have. Yes, sir. Yeah, so uh, why don't you recommend wood glue? That was my earlier question. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm a little hard of hearing because you speak Why up. don't you recommend wood glue? Why don't I recommend wood glue? Um, my experience with laminating wood glue was less than stellar. I followed the instructions in Estes uh, Magadur Red Max instructions, and it said to adhere the sheets to the to the uh, plywood core with yellow glue, and so that's what I did. And three out of three fins worked. Same thing happened to you, Dave? Oh yeah, I was yep. actually. If you didn't get to that point, that's exactly what I was going to say. Yep. If you can weigh it down all you want, and whatever. That's right, and I did too. Gonna work. <laughs> I weighed them down. I I put them under. I sat them under a cinder block for weeks. <laughs> Nothing, man. It's a Finally, just called Estes and said, "Hey guys, guess what? Your instructions don't work. You can't glue this to that core with yellow glue 
and not get a work fit. And I think the problem is... I mean, maybe you can out west where it's drier than it is in Michigan, okay? But it ain't going to happen in Michigan, I can tell you that. Did you have any uh, similar uh, experience with Boston and Boston? Uh, I can't tell you that I tested it with balsa on balsa because I like the way that that medium thick CA sets up and it, it does exactly what I want it to do. And I just, you know, as you saw in the picture, you know, I just kind of smear it on like I'm, you know, coloring with a Sharpie or whatever, you know, you just smear it on there and then, you know, when you press it down, it spreads it, and it only takes a few seconds, even for medium CA, to set up when you spread it that thin. It sets up very, 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 very fast. Yeah, Bob. A couple of suggestions for you. When you're spraying that finishing resin on the surface, yes. instead of using those brushes, which is what's giving you the rough surface that you then have to do a lot of sanding on, if you get the little plastic squeegees, on plastic squeegees, or, or even you know, again, take the top of the Pringles can or the the planter's nuts can and, about. and cut it, or, or an old credit card, and, and use that to spread it. You get a much or the lid to a coffee can, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, same, the, same, same kind of material. Plastic can lids. Yeah. Make sure you cut. Yeah. Make sure you cut that with a straight edge in your exacto. So yes, you have a perfect straight edge. Uh -huh. Actually, I've been known to use yeah. that paper cutter too. Yeah, but yeah, you need a straight yeah, edge. Yeah, you want to make sure that, that that piece of plastic, if you're going to use a squeegee technique, which is which is a very reasonable technique. Okay, just didn't present it here because you know, I'm trying to keep it simple. You know, so craft brushes, while they might take a little bit more work to level the surface, are probably something that's more easily thought of by most folks that are you know unfamiliar with the process. And I don't know the other piece. I don't know if I got this from you. I built that fifty years ago, or uh, later on when you got the three centering ring that you ordered on construction. I built it with the half centering ring not installed. Right. And then I glue the fins on, and then I can do internal fillets in addition to the external fillets, and then I glue that back centering ring on. What's been your experience with using uh, like maybe 30 minute epoxy for uh, instead of CA for the actual lamination between balsa and balsa or balsa and plant? You know, Buck, uh, Dave, I'd like to tell you that I've got experience with 30 minute epoxy and lamination, but I don't. Okay. Okay. My guess would be that that would be a pretty suitable material because of the fact that it doesn't have any water in it. Right. And so just, you know, resin is what it's going to be, right? Okay, I think uh, that we're near the end of our time. Thank you all very much for attending. Greatly appreciate it.